we have a choice to make. And even many who call themselves Christians. Many things in scripture that God has given us directives to do. When the time comes, we make a conscious decision that we are not going to do that, God. Even the whole thing about sex before marriage. The Bible clearly says that we must not commit fornication. But unfortunately, there are many people now in the body of Christ, unfortunately, they are dating. Even some pastors are guilty of it. They are dating and they feel that, hey, I have to test it before I rest in it. So they are good, good Christians. They are good Christians. They preach, they teach, they do everything. They love the Lord. But scratch, break up, break up, break up. When it comes to the dating, Lord, I have to put the Bible aside and I have to test this chick. Or the chick might be saying, I have to test this guy before I marry him. That is blatant fornication. That is blatant disobedience. That is blatant rebellion to the order of God. But many, unfortunately, when the vortex for decision was opened up, in that regard, they obey everything else. Just to make the point, they obey everything else. They agree with Jesus on every point. But right here, Lord, I believe it would appear that that's what they're saying. Right here, Lord, I believe in everything you say. I believe you can take me to heaven, but I don't believe you can give me a compatible partner. So I have to put the Bible aside and test it. And so therefore, we cannot point a finger at Adam and Eve anymore because we are doing the same thing. When we reach the crossroads for a decision, God tells us this is the crossroad and choose the right and live and reject the evil. But even though God tells us what to choose, most of the time we choose, as a matter of fact, the other night, I was watching a Bible class. Very nice Bible class, and the, the teacher was doing very well. But when they touched on the topic of dating, the minister of the gospel stood up on social media where millions of people have access to be listening to her good teaching. And she said, when it comes to dating, it is what she wants. So basically, in a nutshell, she's willing to walk past where God said, light and darkness cannot walk. Many sisters in the body of Christ are not attracted to godly men. They say they are saved, but they still lost after the ungodly men with their ungodly de deeds and behavior. And so what they do, at first, they claim to be waiting on God, but when they see that God is not tailoring His will around their will, they go out of the way, and not only do they find themselves in the company of a sinner man, many of them start to have sex with Him. And then after a while, they withdraw the sex from the man and begin to use that as a manipulative tool for the man to marry them. And say, hey, listen, boss, if you want more of this, you have to come to church, get baptized and married to me. We don't call that baptized, we call that baptize. Because the man is not regenerated. And then when he comes to church, pretends to be a Christian, then baptize the sin. She married to the sin. A few months after, is only she and the ring start to come to church. The husband missing. Because he was never saved. But basically that's what the sister was saying. The big, big teacher on social media. When it comes to that part, it is what she wants. So as long as she sees the guy that she wants, whether I'm saved or not, and she's saying that the Lord says that you will work on the desires of our hearts. Uh -uh. As long as the desire matches with his will, because we have the mind of Christ. 
That's why Jesus Christ said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Let me explain that before close. Glory to God. Jesus is not, was not saying that any little old thing that comes into your brain and you ask for it, I will do it. Listen to what Jesus said. The answer is right there. He said, if you abide in me, how do we abide in him? His words. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. What this means is that if the word of God is rich in us, then guess what? We will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And having been transformed, we now have the mind of Christ. And so therefore, when we ask, we will be asking according to his will. And glory to God. So God answers every prayer, but according to his will. And so therefore, the desires of our heart will become lined up with his will. Now, why would Jesus say, why would God say, light and darkness cannot walk? Do not marry an unbeliever. And if that is your desire, God is going to break his own scripture to give you that. That's not God, my sister. That's not God. As a matter of fact, I had asked her pastor. I said, listen, why not do a teaching on the subject and invite me to chime in because this error needs to be corrected. It was done on social media. Anybody can access it, access it and, 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 and listen to that. And because she's a minister, many young Christians could be led away with that error. So my friends, God will test our allegiance from time to time. Why? Because the devil is tirelessly at us, tempting us. So God always has to get fresh commitment. He said, take up your cross daily and follow me. We will fail at times. We will trip up at times. But guess what? Don't stay down there. Continue to sing in your spirit, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. 